Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Um, I've had a few people ask me what slicer settings I use and I thought I'd just do a little video going through the different programs. I'll go through Cura, Creality Print and Orca Slicer, which is pretty, pretty much Prusa Slicer, and tell you what settings I do to get the prints I get out. Okay, let's go. Okay, so let's start first of all with Cura Slicer. So let's get into that. So Cura Slicer, it's a pretty standard slicer that a lot of people started off with if they didn't start off with Prusa Slicer. The settings are fairly much the same. So if you don't have a settings like with this box down here, you can just push the little arrow up on the top here and it will pull down the settings. From there, if you want to see more settings, click on this little, click on here and go into advanced and that will give you all the settings in there, yeah? So, from there, in quality, I pretty much don't change much in there, except if I want the layer height to be not one of the predefined ones that is up here. So um, sometimes I might put a 0.12 or something if it's not a 0.12, but that, that's all pretty much I change in the quality. For the walls, the wall count depends on how fine it is for me. So if it's really fine, I'm, I'd put one or two more walls on it. Um, the default is two. So if you want it to be sort of rock solid, you'll go up to 15, which is what I had it on before. I think I was putting um, a part that was taking a lot of stress on it, like um, a bearing or something, I think. So I wanted a fair bit of um, wall strength in it. But anyway, my usual ones have three or four, depending on how strong I want it. Okay, so if I did three down here, I always do infill of 10. I don't usually go much above 10, sometimes to 15 if it's really under a lot of stress, but I tend to increase the walls more than I increase the infill. Um, I also, let's have a look, the top layers, I don't have them at 8, I have them at about 4 as well, and the bottom layers I have at 4 as well. Now the reason I have I have these at 4 and not the default one, which is 8, <laughs> I don't need 8, but um. I have them at four, so it covers. It's enough to cover the the infill, so you don't see the infill, and there's still a little bit there to shave off a little bits of the when you're taking off the um, corners with a bearing tool. So it leaves a little bit there, so you can sort of sculpt it a tiny bit. Okay, eight's a bit too much, I think. Um, it's up to you, but I usually have four, four, and three or four on the wall count. From then, I pretty much don't do anything else in here I do use when I do my support I generate I use tree support so the tree support in all the programs now is pretty good um, so I find it a lot easier to get off and it uses less uh, produces a lot less filament a lot easier to get off and I find it fair it works on just about it I haven't found anything it doesn't work on I will say, however, if I'm printing something that has some edges on it, I'll have a look at where the, um, after I've sliced it, and I will preview it to see where the, where the supports are. And if I find any corners where I'm thinking, hmm, not sure about that, I will paint the support on. So I'll, I'll show that in a minute. Okay, for the bed plate adhesion, I, I either use brim or nothing. I don't usually use a raft. Um, I used to back in the old days when I was still le learning, because it sort of, it allowed you to have a bit of a crappy first layer before it build up the raft and then it starts printing properly on top of that. What I do in the support, I'll just um, get more options. So, so see that little thing there? If you click on that, you can get more options. So the other things I change in support is down in here, the Z top and bottom distance. Bottom I have at 0.25 and the top I have at 0.28. I found that works on just about every model I've done and it comes off the build plate really easy. Just to show you how easy they come off the build plate. This is on my K1 Max, um, when I've just pr printed a mask and I'm just pulling it off. The mask comes off really well. The interior of the mask is, is good. The exterior is excellent and it pretty much leaves the support on the bed. So, <laughs> so the gap is just right for my printers. Now I've got quite a few printers and I found it works on all of them. I've got a few bed slingers. I've got the K1 Max and the P1P as well. They both work on those, that, those two support distances I found they work the best. Orca slicer so in Orca slicer over on the side here in the quality the only thing I change in the quality is where it's got only one wall on top I turn that off so by default it's 
check so I go and I turn it off okay so that puts a puts a bit that allows it to put more walls on the top if you're doing a spiral pattern it, sometimes you get the spiral showing and that sort of seems to get rid of it so I take that off and in the strength once again I go to, uh, to three three or four there infill change that to 10 so that's pretty much all I do in the strength in the support once again I put on tree support and I put on tree auto on the top here you need to turn advanced on the style I put down that to tree slim and I go yes to the recommendations and it will change some settings further down that I will change back okay so I do tree tree slim I then come down the bottom here and where it's got Z bottom once again five and I change the Z top even though it tells you to turn it off in that little warning notice that came up I change it back again I have tried it with it off and it tends to merge some of the support into the top lane that a bugger to get off so I change I've changed that that's pretty much all I change in that and in others go up I usually put the brim type on auto and I don't change anything else that might, and I let the program work out whether it thinks it needs a brim or not so that's what the auto means there I turn off the prime tower I don't do a prime tower I don't think it needs it unless you do a multi colors on a, a p1p or a p1s or x1 so let's have a look at a quick example if you have a look at the model you have a look you can see what's touching so it looks like the only thing that's touching is this very front point so this angle probably isn't enough you can lower the angles down but then you get a heap more support everywhere else but I reckon I'm going to need them here and I'm going to need them down around this corner here and probably up around there I'm going to put support mainly because I know it's got to fit on to another part of the mask it's got to fit exact or there's going to be a gap there I don't want any loose gaps so the way you do it is just get this little support painter here and you flip it around I'm just using my right mouse button to turn it around and you can just paint on the support like so if you want the brush a bit thicker just thicken up the brush and if you stuff it up and if you go over the side like that if you hold the shift key down you can delete the support so just delete what you don't want and just make sure it's sort of roughly on the right there's a bit there I don't want and then you just paint where you want it basically yeah okay guys so in Creality print all you need to do is double click on the setting you're going to use over here whether you're going to use the high quality or normal or if you've made some other ones they'll be there as well so just double click once you're in there turn on the advanced tab up here it will give you all the options yeah in quality the only thing I do is change whether it's um whether I want to change the layer height or not and pretty much if I've selected it over on the side I'm, I'm not going to change that okay so that's all I change there in the shell shell I will this is where I'll change my three or four and if this is turned on only one wall for roofing that's where I turn that off there okay so that's all I change in those two oh top and bottom layers if that's either a three or a four <clears throat> okay but um, yeah it's a, just the same as the other the other slices infill 10% usually what I change there don't touch the speed with the support I use tree slim and of course I change down here the top support distance and the bottom support distance top to 0.28 and bottom to 0.25 um, nothing in the material nothing in the cooling nothing in the extruder I don't think I change anything in there no Build place adhesion, I do auto brim. Okay, so let's have a little look at an example. Okay, guys, so in Creality Print, um, to put on the supports, it's this one here. It's the same in Cura, but you've got to go to Marketplace and add the the, um, the option for it through Marketplace. Um, but in this, so you just go Add, and you can click where you want them, and it basically puts supports like that. Okay, if you want to delete, of course you go delete and just click on which one you want to delete. And that's pretty much it. There you go. What I was talking about before about why I don't so I take off that one layer for the roof is when I'm printing things like this, if you print it, I print it so then it's on the bottom, so all the supports are hitting the bottom. So if it does leave a mark, it's not where you're going to see it. 
but it tends to spiral on top and if you want settings without this you can sort of just see it where my finger is just tiny bit see it yeah if I didn't turn it off it's a lot more noticeable okay so um, if you want smooth things that's where you turn off the top layer now with printing support with this one because it will fit on like that on a mask I sit it this way with all the supports hitting the bottom because I don't care what the bottom looks like and I can scrape it with a scraper so what I do is I get a sorry I get a scraper like this and I will just run it down and that's my deburring tool and it deburs and gets all the all the rough edges off for me okay but this is the bit that has to be exact because it has another piece that fits into it so I put all the supports on the bottom now sometimes the bottom will be around here and this quite won't, won't quite be the angle that it needs to get support but I'll put support on these little round things so I prefer to waste about 10 cents worth of filament as opposed to having this crap up and then having to throw the whole thing away so, so this will touch the bottom and that those little end bits touch the bottom and I support all the way down the side so I just add in support you can paint it on okay so and then all the rest is pretty much self supporting and it prints out and I have don't have to do anything to this I just paint it but if you have a look at this how well this is done on the um, the K1 max and you can see how nicely the prints come out I don't know if you can see in there where it's got all the yeah there you go that's a pattern inside but the layer lines I have to angle it to get the light on so you can see the layer lines but they're, they're really really good so if I just put a coat of primer on that I won't have to paint it and it's because I put all the fill all the supports underneath so wherever I can I always make sure the supports are underneath the model and in places where you're not going to see it because I mean that looks really good yeah but on the back where the supports have hit you see it's a little rougher okay so but it's not bad it just means I have to sand it I don't want to sand it so <laughs> I'm lazy anyway guys I hope that helped um, tune in uh, in the next couple of days I'll have, I have another one I'll have that um, light box video done that I was going to do before but someone asked me for this so I, I pumped this one in front okay guys see you later have a nice week bye okay guys thanks for watching I really do appreciate your support you might like one of these or one of these videos um, that I've made in the past, so feel free. <laughs> okay, thanks guys, bye.